The science behind the weather. This time we take a look at the jet stream. I'm meteorologist Jacqueline Whittle, but I wanted to show you this really cool photo first. This is a jet flying at about 500 millibars or about halfway up in our atmosphere, maybe around 35, 40,000 feet. It has a picture of the moon, whoever this is. What a beautiful shot to take from an airplane. Speaking of which, the airplanes fly at about the 500 millibar level. Beyond that, even higher up is what we call the 300 millibar level. That's where we find our jet stream. Now, low, so it acts kind of like a little roller coaster to direct our storms. And as I mentioned, very fast winds aloft. Up in the jet stream, we have something called a jet streak, where we can see winds in excess of 300 kilometers per hour. Mark and Jacqueline here. Mark, remember this tornado in Roselle, Kansas last year? Beautiful tornado and our first one in the chase last yeah, year. Yeah, the reason it was beautiful, did no damage. That's what we like to see. Absolutely right? none, but it was still a very pretty tornado out over the fields, did no damage, but stayed on the ground for quite a while. All right. If you can get uh, debris flying around at 100 kilometers an hour, 120 kilometers an hour, an hour even in the weakest tornadoes, sure. that's still very, very quick. Oh, you bet. That's incredible. In yeah. the Philippines, likely spawned by a tropical system. Absolutely. Okay. Let's talk a little bit about whether we're on track so far. It's April. Uh, you you know, with tornadoes, I mean, where are we at? Yeah, we'll take a look quickly here. Uh, we're just a little bit below average. This is the, sort of the highest numbers. This is our average, and this is our absolute minimums. We're just below average, so the big question is, how active is May going to be? Are we going to see an average or a below average year this year? Uh, we'll keep you dated. We've seen 69 to date. Stay with us. Lots more on this, plus tornado terror. Well, once or twice a winter throughout the country, we'll get a big thaw. Sometimes it happens in January, and it looks something like this. We have warm air advecting into a region, often bringing with it a moist kind of air mass, especially if you live in and around the Great Lakes. We call that warm air advection, and sometimes we see foggy conditions that accompany that, and it's called advection fog. Also, when we have a big warm-up in the middle of January, all the snowpack starts to melt. Uh, but melting, it, even though you're warming, you have a horizontal transport of warm air, you're actually cooling the surface. So temperatures will get warmer, but maybe not as warm as they could if the snow wasn't actually there. Uh, melting is actually a cooling process. So temperatures warm, melting snow as a result. Melting removes heat from the atmosphere. It's an exchange of latent heat. That's what we call it in the meteorology world. So temperatures are moderated by this, and sometimes they don't get quite as warm. Now, if they do uh, have the ability to get underground, that is where they want to be. George Karunas, host of Angry Planet, radios us and says, there's a very large tornado on the ground. Not cool. There was traffic heading into this little town, Union City. So now we had to stop. As you're, as you're getting away, you actually have to stop. Massive tornado. I heard the wind like I've never heard the wind before. And I don't mean just a little whistle or a little howl. It was inflow. And you could see the little pieces of debris blowing by our car into the tornado, which was still a good mile, mile and a half away. Apparently it's driving down the road. There were so many cars on the road, though. That, that was what was so scary about it. I'm we are professionals. We're meteorologists that try and put ourselves in, in, the, in the best spot where we're not going to be in the path of a tornado that people just didn't have time. There's not enough roads to react to that kind of storm. The El Reno was the grand finale here that, you know, took the lives of three prominent storm chasers and changed, I think, the face of storm chasing forever.